When it comes to selling something high ticket, value stacks can actually hurt you. It can have the opposite effect of what most people think that they are intended to do. And today we're gonna to cover why that is, how you can actually do the pitch correctly when it comes to asking for the sale. And everything is covered in the eighth and final step of the inception eight step close. Now, a part of this uh, series of this playlist as always, if you are not caught up to this point, make sure you guys uh, click the links down in the description. Go through the list of this playlist completely in order so that you can watch everything from actually planting the seed to an overview of the eight steps so you actually know what the heck it is I'm talking about and watch steps one through eight. And this is part one. So this is gonna be a two part um, uh, video. This is gonna be part one in this video and then part two will be released next. Uh, and then part one, we're going to cover the actual close phase. And then this part two, I'll actually explain what the toolbox is. And the toolbox is gonna be everything that's related to objections. Now, uh, up to this point, right, we have taken our prospects through an entire qualification process, right? We know they're qualified. We know that they are a good fit for our product and or service. Uh, and now we get to actually pitch them, right? This is where we get to give them value. We get to offer them uh, our services and collect payment, right? Get them enrolled, get them onboarded, get them to move forward. That is what this is all about. And um, so when it comes to actually asking for the sale, right? It is so, so important besides any type of tactic, besides any type of script, you must have absolute certainty and conviction, period. When you get to this part, you must convey right? This is not anything that you can um, learn from reading a script, right? Your tonality, your confidence, and your certainty in your voice must be there before anything else. That is the most absolute important thing is you must be confident and you must be certain throughout this entire process, right? Especially when it comes to delivering a solution to a problem. And that is where the actual close come in. So we are on step eight. We've already um, take, we've gapped them, right? We've, uh, we've gapped them. We've gotten them to do commitment and budget, right? And they said, yes. Now we get to offer them uh, a solution. Solution is now, right? So we take them through these steps and we get to actually go and present our offer. We get to tell them is great. So uh, I, I know that we can help you because uh, blah, 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 blah. And you know, here's how we can help you. Here's a solution. Now, when it comes to actually pitching, here's, here's a common mistake a lot of people will do, especially in the closing industry is we all know this, and if you're familiar with sales and you're familiar with um, um, especially low ticket offers, you've probably heard of something called a value stack, right? A value stack is when you, you, you purchase something and it has all these benefits, right? We'll just call this features and benefits. Features and benefits, right? So maybe you have a sales page, maybe you're closing for somebody else or you're closing for your own business, and you have, it could be a course or it could be a product, it could be a book, whatever. Um, and in these, right, you know, you tell them what are they going to get? What are the features and the benefits of each one? This is called a value stack, right? So, uh, you know, maybe you get like a bunch of modules, maybe you get, um, you know, a, a cheat sheet included, you know, bonus one, bonus two, coaching call, complimentary, blah, 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 right? And what can happen is, what we like to do is we like to pitch our product and our service as a solution to the problems of the prospect. And we start, to, we actually want to, and a lot of people will go through and they'll just start listing all these out. Here's why when it comes to high ticket, this will actually backfire because you got to understand there's a huge difference between the mindset of someone who purchases a product at high ticket versus the mindset of someone who purchases a product at low ticket, right? People who are low ticket, Typically, they, they care about all this stuff, right? They want that value to be just so, so much there. They want a little bit of, of money out to get to the, all this reward, right? But people who are high ticket purchasers, someone who has the right identity, is gonna buy something at a premium price, they, they literally only care about results, right? And they want to know a direct way to be able to get there. They don't really care about all the extra stuff that's gonna get them there and all the extra stuff that doesn't matter of getting them the results, right? So, for example, Let's say, um, let's go with the, uh, the earlier examples that we've covered in this series, right? And let's say you're selling uh, SEO agency or Facebook ad services, okay? Let's keep it simple. So um, uh, Facebook ads services, right? You're an agency, right? And as part of the stuff that you're gonna do, 
you get to, um, you guys will build a website. Build website, right? Uh, and on top of the website, you're also going to uh, do emails, right? And on top of emails, you're going to run ads. Run ads. And on top of the ads and the emails, you're also going to do the copywriting, the words that's gonna be on the page, right? All included, uh, copy, right? And while you're doing lead generation as a bonus, you're also going to help them with um, uh, maybe a weekly sales consulting call from your team to, to your client's team to help them with actually closing the leads, right? A weekly call for sales. Let's say weekly call for sales, right? Notice how I'm listing out everything that's included for what, what we're selling, right? And let's say this product is, uh, I don't know, let's keep it simple. We're gonna say it's 5K per month. So we've done the entire eight steps. We know this is what we're presenting to them. Here's how we can help them. Um, now, let, what happens if you're talking to a prospect and you know that they, um, they need Facebook ad services, but um, they also have a business where they have a web development background. Let's say your prospect's been talking, you've been talking to, you were doing active listening and you realize that your prospect has actually been a web developer uh, for himself and other people for the past 30 years. 30 years, okay? Well, what most people will do is they'll present the solution and say, listen, listen, Bob, I know that we can help you and here's how we can help you. Like, this is what we have to offer. We have this amazing program where we've worked with all these amazing people and they've gotten these amazing results and here's everything that we're gonna do, right? We're gonna actually be able to, to, to help you get from this to this with by building your website. We're also gonna include, this is what most closers do. This is what the average low people do, okay? Uh, we're gonna be able to do your emails. We're gonna run ads for you. We're even gonna do copy and we're gonna do weekly uh, sales calls, right? They just start listing all the features and benefits. Here's why it's bad. If I just spoke to somebody on the phone and they told me that they have 30 years of web development uh, experience, right? And then we're gonna actually help them with building out their website, right? What do you think's going through their mind? If I pitch them and I say, listen, you know, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's 5K a month, but it's a 15K upfront build out fee. Upfront build. We'll run your ads, it's 15K upfront, and then for 5K a month, including ad spend, uh, we'll be able to generate leads for your company, right? Well, what, what's going through the prospect's mind is if I start saying all this, we're gonna do emails, we're gonna run ads, we're gonna write copy, we're gonna do weekly sales calls, and we're gonna build a website, I, it's actually gonna have the opposite effect. It's gonna devalue it. The value's gonna go down. The only thing the prospect's gonna be thinking is, well, wait a second, I just told you that I'm a web developer. I've been building a website for 30 years. I don't need you to build me a website. Why am I gonna pay you $15,000 for all this stuff when I don't need this? So what happens is you say all this stuff, you start listing all the features and benefits and the opposite effect happens in their mind, they're like, well, wait a second, can I get it cheaper? I don't wanna pay you 15K because I don't need a website. Literally everything you built up, all the things you've done comes crashing down because you just started listing all this stuff. And actually funny story, I'll give you a real world example. So. I booked a call with another company that had a, a conversion method, right, for actually converting people um, from um, uh, group members into business, right? I thought it did something unique. The copy was really, really good. I, I wasn't sure how they were doing it, but I knew the value was there, right? So my client, who is actually now my business partner, I'm partnering with their company, and they're one of clients where I oversee their sales team, I knew it would be a valuable asset to um, her clients of her agencies as well as to our own business and to knowing whatever this conversion method is. That's all I cared about. I literally booked the call and only wanted to know one thing, one thing. I only cared about this one thing. And the only thing, one thing I cared about was what is this conversion method, right? How are they actually taking people from group into business, right? Group into business. So booked a call, had our business partner on and also had the head copywriter of our organization uh, on the call as well, just for an educated business decision to see like, you know, hey, would this be valuable to us? I was already sold on it before ever hopping onto the call, right? My goal was to let them see the value of like, hey, I think this will help our business because, you know, we already have all these leads, we're, you already have all this attention, we're already generating traffic, we're already spending money on ads. This one thing will add a huge value. So I knew the value was already there. But 
their stack for their company of this product, when it came time to the end, when it, you know, they, they pitched, they said, okay, we're qualified, they knew they can help us. And it's funny is when the, when the closer um, was going through this and I saw him actually, he, he, what he did, he pulled up their, their, the back end so we can see all the modules and everything that's covered in the program. Right, and this can actually backfire, right? Most people would think to do this. If I show them everything they're gonna get, we're gonna build all this value, right? What happened is it had the, act, the, the opposite. I knew it was gonna have the opposite effect whenever he did it, and I was thinking in my head, damn it, they're not gonna see the value in it because he just did this. He made this one mistake, and I see it all the time from other people that I coach. He pulled it all up and said everything they get. So you get access to all these modules, and in it, you also get help with, with copy. They have a weekly, coaching call where you get to hop on with one of their experts, right? You get to hop on with one of their experts for copy. They even have another weekly coaching call where you get to come on and get on with one of their expert, their experts for Facebook ads. Now, mind you, through active listening, we were there for one reason and one reason only. We were there to figure out to see, can we get help with growing a group and converting them into members? That was it. Right? But at the end, once this was told right, to our head copywriter, who's literally been writing copy for years, as well as my client slash business partner who has been running ads for, for years, big budgets, literally spent so much money in ads, generated our clients over $85 million return in revenue, so knows how to run ads. So they start listing all these modules and they covered modules related to copy, modules related to ads, and as an extra bonus, the coaching that's involved. So what happened was, the copywriter on our team and the client who runs ads was literally thinking, okay, I don't need this. I know how to run ads. I do this for all of our clients. The copywriter is thinking, I sure as hell don't need help with showing up to coaching calls and doing copy. I'm not going to entertain that. So the value of it was literally went down, right? So the objection that was given at that time um, from them, because ultimately it had to be a mutual decision for them to be able to add it to the business was, yeah, we need to think about it, I don't know. And then afterwards they're like, yeah, we don't need that. I'm not paying X amount for that because I don't need these things. The ironic part is, had the individual, had the individual to close them, I was already sold. I was, I was like, yes, we need this. But in my mind, I saw the value of just this. I didn't care about all the other stuff. I was like, okay, that's cool. It need, I still see value in this because the investment alone, I knew that if we were to incorporate just this one piece into the business, I knew we can get our ROI return. Why? Because I have a high ticket mindset. I only think about results. If I spend this much, can I convert it to get a, a return on investment? 100% absolutely. I'm good at what I do. I know I can convert. Um, this was all, had this been the main focal point, just what we were there for, and the only thing that was mentioned, right? Both, all three of us would have been sold on the idea and it could have been a close literally on the spot. So when it comes to getting the close, when it comes to qualifying and getting to the eight steps, the only thing you have to present is if you've done your job in active listening and you actually know what their problem is, you know what their concerns are and what, what has to be overcome to get them to move forward, you only pitch them on the one thing or the few things that relates to the only thing that they need. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say on the subject of, let's go weight loss, okay? Uh, if somebody, uh, example number one, this was business, let's say example number two was someone wants to go from fat to fit, right? <sighs> fat to fit. And all of a sudden, they tell you like, um, um, like you know what, I've been trying to lose weight, I'm struggling for the past uh, uh, two years, and I'm just not at the figure I need to be because of my workout routine, right? I've tried this type of workout routine, I've tried that. Uh, I'm really good when it comes to nutrition. I'm really good when it comes to diet because I've been a dietitian uh, for the past 15 years of my life, right? Always studying nutrition and everything, right? So now that I know that, I know like, okay, they have the diet down, they're eating healthy, right? And let's say you're selling a workout program and it includes working out, it includes um, you know mobility, and it includes uh, health and nutrition diet plans, right? Well, if it, those are the three main pillars, if those are the three main pillars, and I'm on the phone with the prospect or call with the prospect and they already got the pillar of nutrition covered, guess what? I don't have to mention nutrition because the selling point of the prospect is the workouts, right? 
if they say the struggle is the actual plan of working out and they have nutrition down, why am I going to go into all the different bonus stacks that's related to nutrition and then tell them the price of a program when it's not relevant to them? They literally just said that they've been, they're, they're good, they're healthy, they eat right, they're a freaking dietitian. And then you start getting, you start foaming at the mouth of excitement, telling them, oh, it's a no brainer, we're gonna help you with meal plans, we're gonna help you with grocery plans, we're gonna help you, you get a one on one call with our specialist who's gonna actually put a custom meal plan together for you, right? You don't have to say that. They were already sold on this. High ticket buyers, well, let's say this was a $15,000 program for fitness. The right person will see value worth the 15,000 just for the workout and everything else does not matter because you have to only relate to the selling point of what it is that you are selling to the individual. Right now in our team, we're doing B2B cold outreach, selling high ticket. We literally cold call people, scheduled calls, qualify them, get them on closing calls, and we don't even pull up a page and stack them. There's no boom, 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 boom. We literally go through their pain points, see what kind of results they're trying to get to, explain to them how we're gonna help them get there, and we don't even go into details of what it's accomplished for that, like ever, right? It, it's, it, you know, sometimes people will ask like crazy questions, well, how do you do this, how do you do that? And I'm literally like, I mean, listen, I can bore you with all the details of what's involved in it, but does it really matter? What really matters is the result, right? So as a closer, it's very simple. You just always remind them of the result. If you get caught off guard and someone asks you a specific question, and if you don't know the answer to the specific, specific question, or you don't want to fall into the trap, which by the way, this is a trap. It's a trap. They start, they start getting to the trap of details, right? When in reality, if the process is, if, if you're going through the call and the process is something else, and maybe it's just an issue of conversions, right? conversions, let's say I did my job as a closer and I find out that they're only converting um, at, you know, not even a 5% rate of warm, of warm ads. Uh, well, how do you do it? Blah, 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 blah. Hey, whoa, whoa, listen, hey, that's a really good question. Obviously there's, there's, one, there, there's, there's tons of different ways that we do it. We do have an actual proven process, but to be honest with you, does it really matter? Do you care what process it goes through and stuff? As long as you can go and we can get your conversions up to, to 15%, you told me earlier in the call that you know going to 15% is gonna give you an extra X amount of revenue, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, well, it, it, do you care about the, pro does it really matter what the processes or the ads that come in? As long as we can help you focus on just the conversions and helping you get your conversion rate up, that's really all that matters. You know there's no way you're not gonna get your goal, right? Right, oh, weird, so crazy. Not falling into the trap of explaining all the stuff here, you know, uh, opening up Pandora's box to where everyone can ask me about like, oh, tell me more about the websites. Tell me more about the emails. You know how you avoid that? You just don't show it. You don't show it. You don't go into details on it because it does not matter. High ticket people only care about results, period. So when it comes to the pitch, always remember, focus on the one thing that matters to them. It could be one thing, two things, maybe it's three things, whatever things they bring up. And if you know in the back of your mind that your product, your solution, your service fixes that with X, Y, Z, or maybe just X, or maybe just Y, so X, Y, then don't mention the Z. Only tell them, hey, here's how we can help you. I'm confident we can help you because we're gonna help you do this. We're gonna be able to focus on your conversions. We're gonna be able to get it up to here. You're gonna have this, this, and this, right? Here's how we're gonna help you get there. Very simple, to the point. You don't have to go into the degree detail. Everything else, kill it. Your stack doesn't matter. The bonuses, they don't give a crap. The only thing they care about is getting to 25K a month. Or the only thing they care about is actually being able to fit in their tuxedo. Or the only thing they care about is being able to fit in their wedding dress six months from now. They don't give a crap how you're gonna get them there. Right, does not matter. The only thing that matters is what you're gonna do to be able to help them get them there. So, so let me next part, pitch. So when you actually get this, now that you know that the stack's not gonna be beneficial, and hopefully after watching this video, you take my advice and you kill it, by the way, uh, put in the comments down below, how many people have ever fallen into this trap? If you've ever been on a sales call and you actually mentioned all the features and benefits, or you pulled up the page, you start listening up the stack, put in the, put in the comments below, after reading the stack, how many people got the reaction of more questions? If you ever had a prospect do that before, asking you more detailed questions because of the stack and got you in trouble, let me know in the comments below if you can relate to this. Now, when it comes to the pitch, right? 
and you actually pitch them. You do your job, you tell them exactly what's there. Before we get into part two of this video and go into uh, the toolbox, which is gonna be objections and stuff, I want you guys to understand that sometimes people will, they will have, uh, they will have questions, right? And questions does not mean it's an objection. Okay, you give them an option, maybe they just have like a, a certain question about you know, how something works, it could be, could be broad. What they're saying is, here's how I can help you. Here's how I can help you. Here's, I'm just not gonna put how, here, whatever. Here's how I can help, right? And then you offer them solutions. The best thing you can do is give them all options. You can give them either two options, or give them three options. It really does not matter. Okay? Hey, here's how we can help you. We do this, this, and this. And there's two ways that we can we can help you. We can either do option A or we can do option B. Right? Whatever. So option A, we can serve you at a done with you level doing this, this, and this. Or option B, we can do this, this, and this at a done for you level. Right? Option A consists of this, this, and this. Option B consists of this, this, and this. The investment for option A is blah, 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 blah. The investment for option B is yada, yada, yada. Which one of these two works best for you? I don't need to explain what TF stands for. Shut TF up. You give them the options and then you shut the heck up, right? You let them do it because people have to actually go and process. So once you get to step eight and you actually pitch them, you just let their brain process it. It's okay if they have questions, okay? Because it's them just pondering information, right? Another thing that people will do is they'll ask a question and then you'll address it and then you'll just keep going. You just keep talking and they just start spewing at the mouth again. Again, don't screw up everything and all the hard work you put into qualifying this individual and ruin it now. Okay, this is the easy part. If you're confident that you have a solution, you say it with absolute certainty, like, listen, I can help you. Here's how I know we can help you. Here's the options. We can do this, this, and this, or we can do this, this, and that. And uh, you know, here's how much it costs. I literally just got off of uh, a call earlier today and pitched a 50K package. Literally, told them the investment from it. Uh, the, and it was funny is uh, I pulled up older slides that weren't, um, that weren't edited, so the prices weren't on the screen, and I was like, oh crap, I was like, this is an old one, the, pack, the, the prices aren't on here. But I was like, hey look, here's option A. Um, we, had, we had three of them, we had option A, B, and C. I was like, option A is not gonna be a good fit for you, here's why, uh, but I think options B and C would be a good one. Uh, option B is 50K package, option C is 100K package, and here's what's included between the, both of those. And I literally said, which one of these two is gonna work best for you? Well, what's the difference between of them, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so very candidly, I explained to him, well, listen, option three, you're gonna get this, this, and this. <laughs> option two, uh, or, or option B, you're gonna get this, this, and this, right? If you want this, this, and this now, option C, the last one, more expensive one, is gonna be a good fit for you, but you don't have to do that. We can obviously get to option C in the future, right? We can serve you completely fine with option B. They are both viable options because I know that, that time and I know cost could be a factor for you based off of your budget and everything that you told me earlier. Why? Because option to seven, do you have a budget for this? Uh, so option B could be viable. So he said, you know what? If numbers make sense, B is gonna be a good one. We have a projection review literally scheduled for next week. Boom, another 50K deal, uh, literally sitting on the table. I did not go into depth of all the stuff that we, you know, here's how we build funnels and here's what's included on it to do this. Literally surface level stuff because it doesn't matter. The only thing this person cares about at a high ticket level is just results. So literally pitch it from there, right? Now, so if they ask you questions about them, you address, well, I want you to understand something. When you present options and a prospect asks you a specific question, do not get flustered, do not get nervous. You should know, if you're confident in your product and your service, you should know that you can help this individual. Investing with you is a no-brainer, right? You must accept that. The investment is a no-brainer if you know you can help them. Who in their right mind would not invest in something that's a no-brainer, right? The only way that you could screw this up is if you feel uncertain about the solution. Now, if you're confident in what you're selling, which you should be if you're selling it, um, and they ask you a question, the reason, really what they're saying is they, they want to be helped. They want to be guided to a certain answer. Sometimes you have to understand 
When it comes to something high ticket and when it comes to different options, we don't know what's best for us. We want help guiding to a decision. It's not that they're not interested because they're asking you a question. It's not that it's resistance. It's not that it's an objection. Most people just want you in your expert opinion to guide them to what's a good fit for them. They literally just want you to tell them what do you, th in a nice way they're saying, what do you think I should choose and why? That's the only thing you should always think. Whenever you go to the close and you give them options and you say, which one works best for you? And they hit you with a question. I want you to go in your mind and say, okay, how, do I, how can I guide this to make the, the best decision for them? Right? Not a no, because the best decision is obviously yes, but which one? Explain to them in your honest opinion. Don't get freaking commission fever and say, okay, well, how can I get paid the biggest commission? Literally tell them what option, how options B and C will serve them, why, and do what's in their best interest. Just like earlier today, I said, listen, I know that this one could be steep right now, right? Option C, will it help you 100%, right? We, we can get going on all this stuff, but it's not off the table. We can also do it in the future. If option B is gonna be very, better, better for your budget and stuff, it's a 100% viable option, right? Prospects will respect you for putting their needs first, right and leading them to a decision that's going to be best for them they respect you for it and they also want to move forward so questions are okay just what's not okay is going into a deep trap of talking then once you address their question and you 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 make them feel certain right you're helping guide them to to certainty um then guess what you do you go right back to next steps cool which one, of the, you know, what are, whatever the next steps may be for you. Is it, you know, are you super high ticket where you need to have a custom proposal? Um, are you, you know, or, or not? Is there some kind of signature? Is it that they have to, you know, get on the phone with a, a business partner? Whatever next steps are, you literally just guide them to the next steps. Um, what you never want to do is if you've seen, if you've been following this channel for a long time and you've seen me cover a video on this, you never want to say is the line that I hate. I hate this line with a passion. With a passion, I hate this line so much. Where do we go from here? Yes, let's let's kill this. Never bring that up again. <laughs> uh, the only time this line should ever come up and during this part is because a prospect's literally saying it to you, right? But you don't say here, okay, cool. Well, here, I think option A be a good fit because of blah, blah, blah. So Mr. Business Owner, uh, or so Mr. Mrs. Prospect, where do we go from here? Ugh, just that's not what you do. Kill that. You literally just go right back and say, cool, which one of the two options or whatever the next steps are, help guide them to a decision. And that is the best way to be able to present a close. So recap, obviously value stacks, they will hurt you. Majority of time, uh, more so than less value stacks uh, at a high ticket level are going to hurt you, right? So let's just avoid them, kill it. That way there's no room for error. Um, just focus on the one thing that matters to them based off the sales conversation. Uh, number two, um, present options. And uh, number three, if they have questions about options, don't get, don't fumble, don't get nervous. Literally just address it, explain to them why you think that option is a good fit for them, and then go back to the solution. You must repeatedly ask for their business and tell them why it's a good fit. And now, you do all this stuff, you've, you've qualified them, you got into the close, you know they're super qualified, you know you can help them, and then all of a sudden, you start getting hit with objections, right? Objections. What do you do when you do all this stuff, you present them, and then you get started getting hit with objections? Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball, just kidding, part two of the eight step inception close. We're gonna cover the toolbox that I use for our team that is duplicatable to overcome objections. So if you guys found this valuable, please like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know what you thought of this playlist so far in the comments and share this video with a friend. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below as well. And I'll see you guys in part two where we will cover objections.